Everyone get real quiet. Yeah. Make people wonder if it's broken. Mm hmm. Spoiler, it is. Yeah, probably. <laughs> then, then everyone will start sounding like robots. Then we'll have to do a capture and we'll fail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Yesterday morning, um, the dog that I love dearly woke me up at 4.30 to go outside and get food and then um, left a nice dog poop treat for me, which in the dark of 4.30 a.m. I did not see and I didn't really expect since we had just gone outside. So uh, <laughs> I stepped in it and then spent like... 20 minutes cleaning my foot off and then another 10 cleaning up the part that I, where I mashed dog poop into the carpet. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, fuck it. I'm awake now. <laughs> then I watched that ridiculous war of the spark trailer for magic, the gathering arena that has, uh, Lincoln park slows cover in the background. I'm going to have to find a way to edit that into the start of the podcast. That's my hope. <laughs> talking about dog poop being mashed into the carpet that sucks though that does suck i was extremely mm. mad in the moment but then i got over it pretty quickly she's a cute dog and she's old so like uh, she's not like senile so she should not poop in the house but still what i just saw a game described as boomer core Boomer core. What the fuck does that mean? I'd play something that's Boomhauer core. Yeah. Well, if only we could be so lucky. You can start the podcast if you want, Allison. Hmm? If you want to do the hosting, you can start the podcast. Oh. Or I could do okay. it. Okay. I don't care. I, I can You're do usually it, yeah. the one when Andre's not here. I, I just wasn't expecting it. Um. Yeah. No, I can do it. So. It's alphabetical, so it's Andre then Allison. Uh, That's yeah. not how the alphabet works, but okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, think you're wrong, Pat. Yeah. I think that is how the alphabet works. Yeah, what, the, what are you doing, kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> Just like climbing up to my shoulder. Hi. All right, so I'll mm. get started. And we... hello, and, and welcome to episode seventy of Gaming Fix. Uh, your weekly podcast where Allison is tired. I am joined with uh, Alex. Hey, I'm also tired. Sam. I literally just yawned. And Pat. I just found out that Boomer Core is a thing. <laughs> okay, so what game is that? Because before the podcast started, he told us that the, there's a game described it's, as Boomer Core, and it, I it's, it's some shooter called a Hedon. I'm just going through a Steam queue. Cause I idly button through those. Um, and it was, it's like, it looks like, like a quake style kind of shooter, but not good. I don't know. Also, I'd like to, uh, share with everyone before we get started, uh, proper with, um, the steam description for a game called rabbit burn. Um, it is tagged with sexual oh, content. Yes, I, I okay. saw this so last everyone night. everyone is, is aware. Yeah. A fabulous riches, flying fists, and sensual embraces abound in this dazzling arena where rabbit men and bunny girls sprint to and fro, dodging explosions, brawling, making love, or just rocking out. It's the crazy, depraved billiards game, Rabbit Burn. Yep. Yeah, I actually saw okay. that last night. So, so it's like, so, okay. So before that, I was thinking like, okay, People who are making games are are pervs. Like we know this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a perv. This is a perv game. There's no. Well, right, 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 right. But but then it gets to billiards, and I'm just like, what the fuck? And, and I feel like the, the fact uh, that it went from like I'm like, okay, this makes sense. Everybody's perv. Like to uh to billiards, and I'm like, oh, that's the thing that blew my mind. I'm definitely of like a. I guess I should try it before not the game. To be clear, before I go, before I knock it too hard, but. I'm definitely like not. I a think fan. you should try it. No, definitely not a fan of the like porn games on Steam thing. Yeah. Generally. 
um, just because like shit like this shows up in my queue. And I know there's a way you can turn off adult content, but I don't really want to do that because like a game like the Witcher has nudity and sex scenes in it. And I don't want to like not access that. So I don't know if that like turning off adult content thing also turns off non porn games that are adult. Cause I, don't want to do that. With all that said, this does look like a creative porn game as they go. Like it's not just a visual novel. You it's know, like, although if like you're going I, to create, if you're going to create a porn game, you might as well be creative with it. Yeah, and it's got positive reviews so far. Okay, <laughs> cool. I'm. There's 20 different levels to play on. <laughs> 20 well you know what this is funny girls and 24 faceless rabbit men <laughs> all beautifully modeled and animated hey, in 3D. faceless that's that seems off it's that's pretty cool. fucked up looking like i mean like the, there's nothing in it that's like actually like offensive that shouldn't be on steam like i don't like really love that any of these games are on steam but it's not like the other game that was removed or anything but all of the male characters are like kind of deranged looking it appears that everything that's happening is consensual but they all have they all look like hotline miami characters all the dudes. Oh. Okay. Well, it's kind of gross. Anyway, ignore it. If, moving on. If you have anything more to say about about this, about nope, this, and I never will. <laughs> that you are bringing uh, next week. No. Nope. That is going to be part of our game of the year discussions. No. Nope. Uh, we can talk, start talking about games that we have already played a little bit of this week. Nope. This isn't like when I said I was never going to play Kingdom Hearts and then I'm playing all the Kingdom Hearts games either for the record. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think one of us, you should play that and one of us should play Bloody Walls. Oh, God. Oh, God I forgot about it. Uh, oh, no. I, you're, you're a robot again, Alex. Alex, you're a robot, but I think about Bloody Walls a lot. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but yeah. but I do. Alex um, is occasionally a robot. It's not as bad as before where your voice cuts in and out. It's just that you're a little robot -y, so we can at least understand everything you're saying. It just sounds bad. So it's a cut above last time. Oh, I, I, f I found Rabbit Burn in the Steam because I literally just started doing cues to, with the idea of finding it. How does this game like get so high in the cues early? Who on? fucking knows? I don't really understand. Like, yeah, I don't know. I haven't done a Steam. I haven't done a queue in Steam for like a very long time so it was like far cry and uh baba is you and sometimes like, oh, i wonder if it's okay. like because you've played a visual novel on steam before you must like porn games like i wonder if that's their you metric. know i mean <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to tell us about your relationship with Bentai, Alex? <laughs> I mean, I get these recommendations think, oh, all the time. Speak, well, speaking of, I think Sam has a visual novel that yeah. talks about hentai in it. I would say we can use the language that includes hentai. <laughs> Sam? It is, it is a game in which hentai is discussed thoroughly. <laughs> Uh, multiple points is it just described uh, or is there any like featured obviously there's no like actual pornographic content in the game but there's there's no pornographic content in the game but one of the characters is a like porn otaku and is consistently and frequently talking about the porn that he likes or trying to get the <laughs> women in the game to say stuff that you might say in a porn interesting so he's like, okay, now say that again, but a bit slower. And it's pretty gross. I do want to just bring some quick breaking news. Rabbit Burn is at the top of the new and trending list on Steam. Oh, so maybe that's uh, Anyway, why. please okay. continue. Uh, breaking news was necessary there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I finished Steinsgate now. Um, I've got five out of the six endings. Um, unfortunately, the true ending is going to force me to replay the entire game. Uh, uh, hopefully not at a normal speed and uh, I'll be able to skip through, but uh, I'm not 100% certain yet. I don't really know how it's going to go. Uh, I, I thought that the true ending was going to be basically a very slight difference to the uh, Kurosu ending, which is the first one that I got, which is why I left it for last, because I was like, oh, at least, you know, if it's the same, then whatever. And then um, 
turns out that it's like massively different and oh, features yeah. characters that uh i thought were like done and gone and not ever going to be in the game again so um now i guess i need to like basically replay an entire chapter yep and when you told uh, me when you first sent me a message you're like oh i got the ending and you're like oh it's at this point of the game i was like oh you probably have you, you haven't got the true ending then because the true ending is probably another two or three hours after that <laughs> You were, but, Alex was, was, was very, I thought, interestingly silent in our group chat as Sam was talking about how the ending wasn't that different. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. yeah. Once you get the true ending, there, there is a lot more content at the end. Yeah. It seems like, um, I looked, found a YouTube video that was like chapter 10 with true ending and, um, yeah, it was a lot um it was like a two hour video and uh i skipped forward because i was like well i'll just skip forward to the last 20 minutes because with every other ending it's just been 20 minutes of content and uh there were like multiple characters that i hadn't seen for a long time and uh some crazy shit was happening and i was like oh okay so um yeah i i really really recommend steins gate I, I still would it's just like if you want to read a good time travel novel that's that's what steins gate is um so um yeah uh yeah if, basically steins gate is just a really good time travel novel which has some anime in the background um uh, it's hard to like it's hard to go through and describe like what it's like without really saying anything um i kind of talked a little bit about it last week it's basically about this kind of ragtag group of students who accidentally create a time machine due to um like 19 different coincidences and you're like you're like oh these are the like smartest coolest guys on the planet and like not really it's just like an extreme coincidence um and uh they then basically something goes extremely extremely wrong uh in the fourth chapter of the game and then uh you basically the, the, you as the main character have the ability to leap your memories back in time but not your physical body so um the memory leaping starts and you basically you can only go back to the point where the memory leap device was invented mm. so like you can't go back like seven weeks and be just trash the time machine um you have to only go back to when it was invented um so there's loads of really really cool stuff that they do with that um uh, basically they do a lot of groundhog day stuff and also changes to the timeline cause events to happen at different points so like uh the universe in Steins gate is arranged into world lines and when you switch to a new world line that can change whether events do or don't happen but uh, major events are assured on each world line so like if a character dies they will always die uh and uh on that world line at that rough time no matter what you do but if you switch world lines to a very slightly different one they might die the next day or the day after that and if you switch fully to a brand new branch of the world lines you can um they might not die mm. uh, they, they describe it in the game as uh you're on a beta world line and you're trying to get to an alpha one yeah so yeah it looks really really cool um well i say it looks really really cool it is really cool um i i'm super enjoying uh super enjoyed the game uh i was a bit frost pardon me i was a bit frustrated with the uh auto saving so anytime you make a decision in the game it makes an auto save but mm. there's um only enough slots for the amount of decisions in a single playthrough um even though only like 10 decisions the whole game actually affects what happens so what happened to me was that i was uh running through and i didn't go all the way back to the very first decision i couldn't go all the way back to that first decision um but i went for uh, a later decision on the world line where i got the ending that is 
if you don't if you have like basically there are flags in the game system that you can't see but they're like if you have these five if you've said these five things in conversations then you unlock the true ending uh if you've said most of them but not all of them you get a very slightly different ending uh, the ending that i got i thought i really really liked um and i think that the ending that i got might be the one that's the uh, steins gate zero is based on mm. or something similar to that maybe <laughs> that's all i'll say <laughs> you could be extremely um, vague about that <laughs> I, I I have basically all I've heard about Science Gate Zero is that it um, starts where uh, off of the bad ending for the first game, which I I don't what I got didn't feel like a bad end, like it genuinely felt like a really good ending, um, and it had like emotional payoff, um, and it had uh, some really cool storyline tying up, but then I didn't. Um, yeah, I, I I just felt like um, I felt like there could be something cooler and better, uh, so I'm hoping to get that true ending maybe this afternoon while Fiona is out. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the true ending because I think it ties things up in a really really unexpected but cool way. So unexpected but cool sounds great. So, um, how did you enjoy the? Basically, you only make a few decisions over the course of the game aspect of it. I mean, it's like reading a book. You know, you don't make any decisions while you read a book uh, and you still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and a, it's a very similar experience. For me. It was very much like reading, um, especially, you know, I was playing on the Switch. I could play it in bed with a single Joy-Con um, and I was playing like, half an hour before I went to bed. And then sometimes on the weekends I would play through like a chapter or two. Um, and then, uh, all the alternate endings I got on the train on the way to and from work. It takes about 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes at the most to play through one of the alternate endings. I just wanted to see them all. Um, they're all pretty bad in terms of like, they're nowhere near as satisfying as the, uh, the one ending that I originally got. And as I assume the true ending will be, um, it's definitely inspired me to, uh, either play Steins Gate zero or just watch it. Um, I'm leaning towards watching the anime. I have to say mostly because I had a look at, uh, some video of the gameplay and it's the same as the original Steins Gate, um, which is like a lot more, uh, a basic as a visual novel. Like it's, you know, text box, blurred background character standing on on screen whereas Steins Gate Elite is like full animated the whole way through um so I think I would probably just prefer to watch the anime um but you know we'll see maybe they'll do a Steins Gate Zero Elite when Steins Gate Zero is fully finished I don't know if the anime is finished actually it, yeah it's been finished since about last year oh well there we go <laughs> How, what's, cool. what's, what's your hour count at uh i will find out right now i'll just grab my switch <laughs> sure while he's away i'm really interested in his thoughts on steins gate zero as well <laughs> <laughs> because it it is truly just a continuation of the quote-unquote worst ending mm. like worst being the ending which uh emotionally impacts the main character the hardest mm. So it definitely feels like the first, the one that I got first, first time, the Kurosu ending. Mm -hmm. uh, although the my the Mayuri ending is pretty rough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I think. This, so yes, this is a game that's originally from 2010. Can we have it nominated in our best story category now that this is out? Because holy crap, does it go places. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're going to have to talk about, I think, the ways in which we nominate things for Game of the Year this year because there's a number of games that... Now I can't remember the one I was thinking about, but there was one I was thinking about just the other day that I was like, this is clearly a massively overhauled version of what originally came out, and it would be a shame to not talk about it. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was now, but... Um, well. I was already thinking that I'm going to nominate uh, 
Tetris 99. So that's basically <laughs> Tetris. Uh, so I mean, that came out this year, though, didn't it? Yep. yep. Yeah, that's totally eligible for. That's a new game. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But it I just, see what you're it, saying because it is. Yeah. It is it, it is, is Tetris. Right. It, it is almost even, it's weird because like it is more classic Tetris than Tetris effect in a lot of ways because it mm -hmm. doesn't have the VR aspect and it doesn't have the, the like wild visuals aspect. Um, but I think that's totally eligible. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, I, agree, but, yeah. I would have pushed for it to be included in our game of the year for 2018 because it released on the 20th of September. Uh, it is a remake. It's a full remake of the game. What, Steinsgate zero will release on 20th September. Steinsgate elite is a, elite. Uh, yeah. is a, That's um, a tough one. is a full remake. I, I, I'm definitely like, not that we have to hash this out now, but my, my thinking this year on the way that stuff goes, I have like less tr draconian is maybe the wrong word, but I have less of a, like, I think if it's a relatively, if it's a recent game that people were impacted by this year, I'm pretty open to suggestions on that. December least, to December. I am draconian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we'll have to have that conversation. I don't think there's anything from pre-December of last year that I will care enough about to fight for it. So it'll be up to you guys to argue about whether you want to include something like Steins Gate. <laughs> uh, I, of my, Steins Gate, uh, um, would you recommend it to other people just in general? Definitely. Um, I, I think the switch version is super well done. Uh, I had no performance issues at all. Um, uh, which is kind of crazy for a game that is like, a fully animated video and i know that the switch doesn't always do 100 percent well with that mm -hmm. um, but yeah i really enjoyed it it's totally something that you could play on the train to and from work um or on the bus in your case allison it's not um unlike some visual novels it's not pervy uh, <laughs> that's so that's that's good you know that that helps I, there is I, I a pervy character yeah. in the game, but yeah, but his, none of the his women are dressed in like gross ways. His well, arc, his this, arc is also kind of redemptive when you get to the very true. Yeah, end. and 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 per, it's tough because like I don't, I'm not, I don't want to police anyone about like the 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 stuff that they play and and you know like if if you're into pervy games you're into pervy games it's fine whatever i'm not gonna like say there's something wrong with you but it is kind of sometimes it's tough when like i'm not really interested in getting that from well, the novels and sometimes it's tough to it feels like a thing I, a question I always have to ask if I'm interested mm -hmm. in a visual novel and I don't love that. <laughs> well, it's tough when yeah. I'm specifically a woman playing games and I like, I do dig an anime aesthetic and I do dig visual novels. And then I'm like, well, this is like a giant minefield to try and find ones that uh, have female characters that aren't terrible and ha are dressed normally. <laughs> Per, per, sec, like sexual content doesn't necessarily mean pervy either. So like right. you, a game can have sexual content. There's plenty of games that have sexual content that I would not consider pervy. So it's, it's just, it's sort of a tough, sort of a tough thing to, to sort out. And I don't think the solution is like ban pervy games or anything, but at the same time it is. But at the same time, ban pervy games. Um. <laughs> Certainly uh, get I, better about the way that, that, people are portrayed <laughs> that, that well, is that I get better at expressing hey fyi this is what what this is um like to be perfectly honest the the biggest thing that bugs me with that okay that we're gonna get getting into a whole thing with this is when it's um just like a normal game or it's very like innocuous and then suddenly like you have like a female character wearing a bikini and then like or like panty shots or something. And you're like, where did this come from? This is like a super chill thing. And suddenly it's here. So yeah. Yeah. You don't get any of that really in science gate. The one big thing is that there is a trans character in it. That is mm -hmm. not super well done. Mm. Uh, they, they as a character are well done, but the way that they are treated by other characters in the game is kind of shitty. Um, but you know, this is also, it's an older story. The game is, you know, the original game was released in 2010. And I think that there was 
uh, unfortunately, in the last nine years, there's been a lot of progression in the way that people view trans people. Um, and I just didn't think that that had made it to Japan in 2010. Um, Steins Gate Zero does a lot better by that character. Yeah. Just so so you know. basically, there is a trans character in the game, and the main character refers to them as male throughout the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like explicitly as male and them being male is a big plot point in one of the chapters um so you know like the character in and of themselves is is quite good like they all the characters feel really real in the in the game like the, the characters that don't feel real is probably the pervy guy um but i think it's mostly because he's the comic relief um the yeah there's literally like there's no pervy stuff really at all that like there's nothing there's no fan service for the gamer um like there there is one scene where a character a female character throws their shirt over someone's head to distract them and uh even in that scene she's wearing a like very very well covering sports bra which is like extreme. I, I noted that scene being like, this is really restrained for a visual novel. Um, but yeah, no, I would totally recommend it. Um, especially if you like science fiction and uh, like conspiracy theories and uh, time travel, like they're all kind of interwoven into that game in a really cool way. Um, I, I won't spoil it, but who the villain of the game is like really really great and every time it comes up i'm like <laughs> that's pretty cool because it's a <laughs> it's something that exists in the real world that they repurpose uh, and it's really cool um yeah no i totally recommend uh playing it like if you you know it the worst comes to worst get it on steam and refund it after two hours if you don't like it it is on steam so the switch version is the where where i wanted to play it though i think that's the one for me yep and uh because the listening audience in here sam you were at about a 30 hour count for that game yeah I, I i'm 30 hours so i would say the last at least two or three hours has been replaying um maybe four hours replaying to get alternative endings you like going back because uh, i did replay to try and get the true ending and fail twice because of previous bad decisions that i had made in the game but i think i can do it this time i'm going to give it another shot very cool um if unless you have anything else that you'd like to bring uh i think we can move on I'm reviewing a game called Over the Top Tower Defense, which is out on Steam and like loads of different things. Cool. It's pretty fun. It's tower defense. And it's over the top. Yeah, it has some... Um, it Basically, the, the storyline of the game is uh, that there were no wars left to fight on Earth. So we opened portals to other planets so that the soldiers would still have something to do. And uh, it's very, very tongue in cheek about like the soldiers need jobs, the soldiers need to go shoot people and murder zombies and aliens. Um, it's fun though. Uh, it's just how like if you like tower defense, I would say play it. It can't be that expensive. It's a good time. It's on Steam. I think it's on everything pretty much. I'll write the review at some point, and I'll also be reviewing Steins Gate. So if anyone wants to look out for that, keep an eye on my Twitter. Sounds cool. good. Um, Pat, what do you have to bring today? Uh, I have a couple of things. One is mostly just sort of a continuation of a game that I brought last week. Um, I've been playing a lot more um, Descenders, which, um, as if you didn't listen last week, is like a sort of downhill mountain biking game uh, that is super physics-y and um, got roguelike kind of bones uh behind all of it and i just wanted to again note that like that game is really 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 good and i think that that anyone who likes that sort of like very fast paced very precise um traversal in games should check it out because it's like just really 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 fantastic to play i've kind of gotten better at it over the last week i've been playing it i think every day i play for like 
every day for like half hour to 45 minutes at least. Um, sometimes a little longer. Uh, and I've got all the shortcuts unlocked for the first kind of world. There's two different, um, runs you can do. There's like start career run and career plus run. Um, and, uh, I think like what's cool about that game is once you get kind of good at it, you basically are not that I think I'm that good at it, but I still haven't been able to finish a full run from start to finish, but you're basically operating at the edge of control the whole time. Like you're one, you can, you can play it in a really chill way, but if you're pushing yourself, you're basically like one screw up away from like bailing and destroying yourself. Um, so it feels like it's got that kind of feeling of like of excitement because you're so close to the edge all the time. And like, if you, 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 if you hit a jump wrong, then you're screwed and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's very fun, not screwed for your whole run because you always can like, you take some damage and go back to the top. But, um, I just think it's really satisfyingly challenging and, um, it's something that if it's kind of, it's attracting me in a way that Spelunky did for a lot of people, which is not to say that it's like, obviously the verbs in Spelunky are totally different, but because it has that sort of similar like structure of having shortcuts between different areas that all have like smaller self-contained levels, it means that like, okay, now that I have the shortcut to the final area, I want to practice that area over and over. So I'm good enough at it that I can put a full run together. And then when I finish a full run, I can upload that score and then try to improve on it. And it also has a daily challenge like Spelunky too. So, um, or like Spelunky also. Uh, so anyway, uh, that is one that I would say definitely buy it's on game pass now too. So if you have that, it's available there. I'm glad I bought it just because I want to throw money at the the developers because they're pretty cool. Would um, you would you say that it's worth the twenty five dollars? Absolutely, in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah, cool. definitely. Um, cool. Like if it were a full price, like sixty dollar game, it would feel a little thin, I think. But it's just like infinitely replayable, um, and you it it has the kind of the thing I wasn't positive on when I first was playing it was if it had that sort of like push after you saw all the environments to keep wanting to play through it, mm -hmm. but it totally does. It, it's cause it's even though like sometimes the tracks start to feel like they're always unique, but they are built in chunks. So like there's, you'll start to see like, Oh, I've seen this turn set. I've seen this jump before, but it, you start to like recognize the track pieces and it's actually really cool because then you kind of can predict a little bit what's going to happen and you start to play the game like two steps ahead of yourself where you're looking not at what's right in front of you but what's like coming up on the horizon and it's really really satisfying when you're playing at that point because you get into this flow state with it that's just like really really cool um and then again you can also slow it down whenever you want there's no like the 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 push to go faster is mostly in securing more points. So there's no reason you can't play it at a slower pace too, if you just want to get through the content and see it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really phenomenal game. I'm, I'm greatly enjoying it. Uh, and, uh, and, and I want to finish a full run so I can feel good about starting the daily challenge and trying to get through those. Um, cause I will probably do those daily for uh, a good chunk of time. Um, but the other thing that I brought, the new release this week, is the new Rage game, Rage 2. Um, Mega which textures. Is, what's that? Mega oh, textures. Yeah. <laughs> I actually finished playing through Rage 1 last weekend. Um, I hadn't played it before. And similarly to my experiences with Rage 2, I think I like that game more than most people. Um, like, Rage 1 definitely is not... I could kind of see playing it at the time as being a little disappointing based on the way it was hyped, but it was really fun for me to play through kind of knowing what I was getting into. Um, and, and I thought it was pretty entertaining. Like the story is bad to non exist. I mean, it's, it's just not there. There's nothing, not much story there. Uh, and the game ends really abruptly in a weird way. Um, but the, I think that the world, is really cool. That's kind of my, the thing that is the most interesting to me about 
these games is they feel to me and other people have felt the opposite. So I don't, it's funny, but it, there's a lot of post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic games. That's like, there's a billion of them. Um, and I think the thing that I often struggle with in that is a lot of them feel like you're in a big desert and it's pretty f- flat and the towns are like these beat to shit towns with like a few buildings in them. And that's not to say that like fallout isn't good, but it doesn't, the worlds don't really draw me in that much. There's like cool components to them. Like it's cool that in fallout four, there's a city in Fenway park. That's a neat concept, but the, the in-between spaces are always just feel so empty and so bland to me in, in post-apocalyptic games. And despite the fact that a lot of people are saying they think that rage Two's world is pretty bland. I, I think they mean from a content perspective, because it's actually one of the more interesting looking game worlds in that genre that I've seen, because it's like very vertical in a lot of ways. There's areas where there's like this huge, these huge canyons that you can fall into and die. And I just assumed that like, that was the, the way the environment worked, but you can actually get down into the canyons as well and right around at the bottom of them. And they're like really big. So there's just a, a lot of neat verticality there in the environment. It's more diverse. There's like a Sandy desert area. There's a more traditional, just kind of like dirty flatter area. There's like the canyons, there's jungle and forest areas. Um, and the cities themselves are all, in my opinion, like really, really interesting the way they're put together and laid out, which is a thing in rage one that I really liked that they kind of brought over. They didn't port my favorite city into rage two, which is the city based in a subway station. But, um, but, but in general, like the cities feel it's a cool thing. Cause like, they're not that big, they're video game cities in an open world game. So the actual area they take up is pretty small. When you go into them, they feel like they're large settlements with lots of people in them, which is something that I think that open world games generally handle really poorly. Um, it's a thing that like Skyrim is my favorite or Elder Scrolls is my favorite series, but it's part of the reason that I like oblivion more than Skyrim is because the cities in oblivion feel far more like, convincing to me than they do in Skyrim. Um, and I think rage two does a really good job at that. Uh, so I think that it's like interesting that people have complaints about the environment. And I think in general, the criticisms around that game are super fascinating and like largely really positive for the way that games are being thought about and criticized because, um, like on the one hand, there's, there's the whole, there's a whole, people should go read Chris Plant's article for Polygon about uh, cleft palettes and like stigma associated with that. Um, a shoot, I need to, I should pull it up. Um, a friend of my partner also wrote a really great article and I'll pull it up um, and, and mention it at the end of the show. Um, but wrote a really great article from the, he's a geneticist. Um, and he wrote a really great article about like, why we should change the language we use in post-apocalyptic games in general, because like saying using the term mutant, which is how the, 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 those enemies are described in rage is not really accurate. Like a lot of the things, a lot of their like quote mutations just wouldn't happen from human experimentation because the idea in rage is that it's sort of a spoiler for the first game. Nobody's going to care. Um, the, all along you assume that like the mutant characters are mutated from radiation or something. The, the reason there's an apocalypse in rage is because the Apophis asteroid, which is a real, a real asteroid, um, hits earth and, uh, everyone goes into hiding in these arcs underground. Um, and so the assumption is there's some kind of radiation or something making them mutants, but you find out that it's actually just this group called the authority, the kind of bad guys, main bad guys are creating these mutants by experimenting on them. And in this article, um, this author points out that like, that doesn't really make any sense because that's not really how mutation works. Uh, and it's not really how like physical mutation would work. Like you wouldn't try to 
do their like do something to a creature's brick to a person's brain to be able to control them and then they would get a cleft palate that just doesn't make any sense um so it's it's interesting and it's really not that i'm saying that like it's great that rage did this bad representation of people because now everyone's talking about it but it's a subject that i would never have really thought about before um and i think it's great that people are talking about it in the context of the game playing it the, that stuff hasn't really affected me personally but um you know there's definitely stuff you should read before you play it so you can go in and understanding what some of those tropes look like and like what why they can be problematic um and my hope is that it's a catalyst for people to like other developers to learn about this stuff too um and then the other thing that i think is interesting is this game like from a quality standpoint is as good as I would say even better than any Far Cry style game, any Just Cause game, any like that Mad Max game. It is totally one of those. It is a big open world with lots of checkboxes and lots of icons. Like it, it's on par with any of the pre origins Assassin's Creed games. It's like, it's that kind of game. And I think it's interesting that people are clearly finally like tired of that because <laughs> it's getting a lot of, more negative response. Personally, I'm not tired of that. Uh, I, I like those kinds of games as being sort of mindless, like grind through all this stuff. And the thing is that rage two plays really, really well. Um, it's, ex it's really, really fun to use the powers. The weapons feel great. Um, it has, I'm someone who doesn't like shotguns in video games. It has a great shotgun, um, that has like alternate firing modes, depending on whether you're aiming it or not. Uh, and just in general, it's, it's a very fun game to play. I think the driving is fine. It's not like anything to write home about. It's not as good as a GTA or, you know, uh, any number of other games, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It feels better than Far Cry 5's driving for sure to me. Um, so I think it's interesting that it's getting such harsh criticism because I would hope that that means that in general, critically, we're moving into a space where, uh, we're just going to be more critical of games overall, um, which is kind of an exciting thing uh, because I sort of expect, I would have expected this like five years ago, this game would have gotten eights and nines easily. So the fact that it's, it's receiving a little bit more pushback is, is pretty interesting. So mm -hmm. it's being, or it, uh, the developers behind it are both id and avalanche, right? Like, does yep. it feel more like one than the other? Like, does it feel more doomy or does it feel more just causey? Um, I, I almost think that the fact that the last game it made, well, technically the last game they made was Wolfenstein too. Um, the, the, uh, it doesn't really feel like doom to me. I mean, it's a good shooter in that doom is also a good shooter. Um, it feels a little more, I don't know what the right word is muted. Maybe it, it's not, it's not the same, like holy shit, like going to cock the shotgun at the, in time with the music. Like it's actually a lot more self-serious than the marketing would lead you to expect. Mm -hmm. That was clearly a, oh shit, this is leaking. We need to come up with some kind of unique look for this game. Um, I mean, it is vibrant in ways, but like it doesn't have that sort of same flavor that doom has. Um, and then I would say the open world stuff, like from a control perspective feels a lot like that Mad Max game. Sure. Um, I think the world design is more, far more interesting than Mad Max, but, uh, but it is, it is definitely that, that kind of feel once you get in the car and it really does feel like two different games. It's very seamless. Like when you hop out of the car, you're, there's no like load screen or there's no transition or anything. You're right in first person and you can shoot, like you can pull up in your car to an enemy outpost. And if there's guards like walking around, you can shoot them from your car before you go in. So it really is fully seamless. There's never load screens or anything that I've seen. Um, but it does feel like two different games when you're in the car versus when you're running around on foot. So it's not even that it feels more like one or the other. It's just that they're not really, I guess I would say it kind of feels more like a doomy kind of game because you spend more time fighting on foot than you do in your car. You kind of just drive from point A to point B in your car with the occasional bit of car combat. It's almost never necessary to engage with the car combat stuff though. There's like 
bosses that roam around that you can fight from the car. But other than that, I haven't seen anything story-wise that, that does it. Um, one thing that I really enjoy about the structure of the game is, and this will be a turnoff to a lot of people is it's not really, it has a just causey sort of structure in that there aren't just a string of missions to play. You like, you, you, the game starts, you go through the tutorials in the like opening areas, and then you're told, Hey, go find these three people. Two of them are characters from the first game. One of them is the daughter of a character from the first game. Uh, cause I guess John Goodman was too much money, uh, <laughs> um, which is too bad cause his character is really great in the first game. Uh, but, uh, you, so then from there you go to each of them, you like, you go to, uh, Marshall, who's like the, the, the captain guy from the first game and you meet him in his bar. The town's really cool. He tells you to go down into the sewers and fight through all these mutants and, and like save the town's water supply because there's mutants like messing up the town's water supply. So you go through and you do it. And then he's like, okay, so here's my upgrade tree. And he doesn't say that, but I wish he did. Um, he, he, they're called projects. Here's my projects. And so I need you to go out and do X, Y, and Z. So then like from then on certain activities in the open world are tied to progressing his like level. And then as you level him up, then you get access to more missions from him. And the same thing is true of the other two characters. And you're really encouraged to travel through the whole world from the get go. It's not like start at the bottom and work your way up. It's go meet him in the Southeast and then go meet the, the woman in wellspring in the middle of the map and then go meet the character, Dr. Kavasir from the first game at the North of the map. And then from there, every time you're doing things in the open world, you're progressing their tech trees and getting unlocking more missions from them. And I like that structure a lot because it's very clear that like it, it sort of functions like the chaos levels in just cause, which you were used to unlock things where it just feels like the game knows what it is. It's like a big, huge map for you to do a bunch of activities on. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm really enjoying it. It's not one, it's not a game for everyone. You have to be wanting to play that kind of game. But if you like far cry ish open world shooters, I mean, it's the best one that has come out in quite a while. Cool. Does it live up to its name? Are there many people who are raging or is it pretty placid? <laughs> uh, the, the most rageful you get uh, excuse me, is, um, you build up an overdrive meter, which you can pop once it's full. And it's kind of like a timed, like everything gets better. You're you, like the color palette gets way more saturated. Um, it's like you took a drug or something, but what's cool. What I like about it is the, the weapons all function differently too. So like the shotgun, instead of being like either, a slug with not back knockback or a powerful close range blast. It's, it becomes like, it's has like a spread of tracer rounds. So when oh, you're in overdrive, so wait, if there's like, do, do they say cheers, love the cavalry's here? <laughs> if you're, if you're in overdrive and there's like 10 enemies running at you, you can hit all of them at once with the shotgun rounds. So you may, so that's the time when you would want to like pop your overdrive. When you pop your overdrive, you're pretty rageful to answer your original question. Rad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also think it'll be interesting to see how this is not the first game that's had this like Assassin's Creed does this, but I haven't really, despite being a pretty huge Assassin's Creed fan, I've found the most recent two games kind of daunting to get through. So I I'm behind on them. Um, this game has like the games as service thing going on where they're going to introduce like world events and new content over the next few months, but not just like, not just DLC, it's much more sort of drip fed. Um, and that is weird. It feels like they're trying to say it's like more like an MMO, um, which is an interesting thing because there's no multiplayer in the game at all. So I I'm interested to see how that goes. That's part of why I wanted to buy it was to kind of see what that progressing content looks like. Mm -hmm. Uh, then the other thing that I would say before we move on is, it's got a really gross, uh, tie in with Bethesda net accounts. So like if you buy the deluxe edition or you pre-order it, you get access to some pretty cool stuff. Like the pre-order in particular gets you access to 
a whole mission that ties into the first game and is very cool and should not have been a pre-order thing that should definitely have been built into the game because it like gives you a cool weapon. It gives you a mission that is really interesting. And if you've played the first game or if you care at all, uh, you meet a character for the first game from the first game. That's not in the game. Otherwise, like it's a pretty meaty thing. It took me like an hour and a half to play through it. Um, and it's hard too, which is kind of neat. Cause a lot of that game is not super challenging. Um, and it's tied behind pre-order DLC. And then the, the deluxe edition gets you the BFG from doom, mm-hmm. which is like, I can't imagine playing that game without having that weapon. It's so fun to use in rage too. So one, it, they tied some shitty stuff up behind, or like they tied some really good stuff up in a shitty way behind those things. And then, um, the, they also don't tell you before you buy it. And they don't tell you in the game. I had to Google it to access all of that stuff. You have to log in with your Bethesda net account, regardless of your platform at the main menu. And it's just a button prompt. Like on Xbox, it just says like press Y for Bethesda net account. And if you didn't have a Bethesda net account, which you totally could not have, if you haven't played Elder Scrolls online, if you haven't played Elder Scrolls blades, like a lot of their games don't require that stuff because like fallout four and Skyrim came out before that existed. So it's kind of sucks. Cause they're saying like, Hey, you bought this stuff, but you have to make an account with us in order to use it. And we didn't tell you that beforehand. Um, and I think that that kind of sucks. I don't, I don't love that. Yeah, it kind of um, sounds like the uh, mass effect three from ashes situation. Totally. Yeah. Where, it's where very similar to that it changes the game completely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I guess I shouldn't say it's not quite that impactful because from ashes gave you a character that was with you for the whole game. That was like meaningful. Whereas the story elements of rage two already aren't that great. They're present. I actually kind of enjoy the game story, but it's not, I'm not going to tell you it's like good. Um, uh, (laughs) it's just barely there anyway. It's, it's not obtrusive. I'll say that. Um, but it's, and the weapon you get is comparable to other guns. It's like a slow firing pistol that does a fair bit of damage. And there's other guns that are, can fill that role. So it's not like it's imperative, but it's more that it's just a weird thing for them to, to tie up behind it. Um, and the account stuff is strange too. Uh, and I don't know what that means for like the roadmap. Like if you have to have the account stuff tied in to access the vehicles that they're adding and it's strange. Well, since we don't have Allison, should I just jump straight into the thing that I've been <laughs> I've been poking yeah. at? Yeah. Oh man. It's, it's sad because this is one that I think she's gonna want to hear about. But um well how about this? I'll talk about tents and trees for about a minute <laughs> until she's able to come back. I played tents and trees yesterday. I have completed tents and trees. Nice. <laughs> all 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 the levels are filled in. Uh though keeping up with dailies keeping up with dailies keeps you real busy yeah <laughs> like it, it can be a lot but now we have allison so i can talk about my real game hi allison so um the game that i've been playing i haven't put in a ton of time to uh, but it is called snakey bus oh yeah oh and, i yeah. saw the quick look of that <laughs> Oh, I didn't know they had a quick look, but yep, yep. it's uh, just came out last week. It's by a team. I assume they're like two or three people, like very small team. Um, the basic concept is if you've ever played the classic game Snake, wherein, you know, like if you're on your old Nokia brick phone, uh, you, you have a head and then you collect things in the case of Snake. It was blocky, so they're just squares and... Uh, as you do that, your body extends. So your head becomes your head plus a body length, then plus two body lengths, etc., until forever, until you basically run into your tail and then you die. Uh, sure. This this is the same concept, but in a 3D space where you're a bus, so it's kind of like crazy taxi. Um, mm. So uh, I think the concept is really cool because crazy taxi is rad, snake is rad, and do, Combining both of those things in a 3D space is, is you know, by their combined properties, rad. <laughs> um, I would say this game is it's okay. <laughs> um, 
I think its concept is amazing. I think its execution is mediocre, I guess, is how I would put mm-hmm. it. It's the kind of game where, for me, um, it's almost a novelty game. Like, you you pick it up, you play it for about half an hour, and then you're like, okay, yeah, I'm good. I get it. Um, though, I think I still might go back to it, and it seems like the kind of game where if you have five minutes, you might enjoy just kind of tossing it on for a quick little thing. Just do a run, see how far you can get. Like it's it's not a game you're gonna sit there and play for two hours straight. Um, I think yeah, it does a lot of things really really well. Like I think coming at it from a programming perspective, like uh, thinking about it as a programmer, like they did a lot of really cool things, especially for a small team. Like the mini map, the way it shows the paths you've taken and how long your bus is is really good. Uh, the 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 way your jumps and stuff are tracked. So when you are driving around, you can see where you jumped and like you can drive under the spots where you jump because those the, the the bus links behind you are still going up and down and stuff like that. Like that's pretty fun. Uh, but I don't know. A lot of it is kind of not great. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> which, kind of... Which I feel bad saying for a small team. Like it's, it's stuff that could be improved. I don't think it's like... Um, stuff that's fundamentally broken with the game but like i ran into some bugs that ended a run and i was just like oh well okay or like one of the intrinsic things with snake is if you hit your body you just it's over but with this one that's not the case you can hit your body and it'll just continue because the end state is you coming to a full stop for like a second and a half or something so i kind of wish like if you hit your own body you just kind of explode or something but that's not the case yeah, the, the thing that kind of hit me, I, I was thinking about picking it up because I thought, oh, this could be kind of a fun game to pick up, like like you said here or there. But the thing that kind of got to me was that it's a $10 game for yeah. what's basically Snake. And it's, yep. it feels bad to kind of quantify it like that, but it feels like kind of a high asking price for what yeah. you get. Yeah, that was the last thing I was going to mention is that I uh, I think it's it would be great at $5. I think $10 is a little much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, it's got a decent breadth of content. Like you've got a whole bunch of stages that you unlock through playing it, uh, and they look fine. They look nice. I like the way the visual style changes from stage to stage. That's pretty cool. Yep, you can. Um, there's a way to get a, the the first stage is Paris, and there is a way to get a night version of Paris, which is neat. That's neat. Is it? Does it have? So like, are you unlocking things through? some kind of like progression element or is it more just like you play it, you get a score, you unlock a thing. So the way it works is for stages, it's dependent on runs. Like if you've done five runs and you've logged five scores, then you can unlock the next stage if you want. And they're not credits. It's just a literally like this stage you have to have uh, done five and then the next one you have to have done 10. So it's, it's, uh, it's cumulative. Yeah. Uh, But for you can unlock different bus styles, so you can get like a party bus, which looks real dumb, okay. and you can get a cluster truck uh, bus, oh, cool. which, lo- which is that's, neat. That's kind of neat. That's... Yeah, like that's neat. But um, that comes from uh, high scores that are dependent on the length you get. Got it. Okay. So, so it's still run based, but you know it just gets yeah. bigger and bigger. That's neat. I probably will pick it up um, because I the the the, the criticisms you have for it sound like things that would probably get to me a little bit, but at the same time, like I really like those kinds of things. Like I, I was extremely hot on double daggers mm, um, too. back when that came out, I never got very good at it, but I played that <laughs> for hours and hours and hours, despite being pretty, I've never uninstalled it either. Cause it's like a small little thing. Yeah. Um, Running the quake two engine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it, so game. I enjoy having games like that around to just throw on. So even though, I agree that 10 bucks seems like, again, I hate to say it because it's a small team, but 10 bucks seems like kind of a big ask, all things being equal. But at the same time, I can, I can afford to drop 10 bucks to support a small team doing something cool. Oh, so sure. yeah, definitely. So it, I, I, it's I wouldn't, probably worth it to me. I would say I'm not going to refund it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like no, I, no. I certainly yeah. want to support the team as well. Yeah. So. It, it doesn't sound like you're necessarily discouraging people from playing it either. Just kind of yeah, just caution yeah. what you're getting into. Yeah. Um, if you're price conscious, it sounds like maybe something. it's also something to keep in mind. Like I, yeah, it's something where I'm actually pretty interested in picking it up, especially when I, I, I just like how kind of, 
like the, the, the weird stupidness where you see like your, your bus, like jumping over, like you see your old jump. And I kind of, I love that kind of thing, but I think it, for me, it's a wait for your steam sale type of game. I just love the way it looks, frankly, like that's, that's what a lot of it comes down to, like the way the different stages look and, and like the, the way that it moves looks really appealing to me. So, but it, it's also one that I haven't been clamoring to play either. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you'll be fine. There's no zeitgeist around it. You, you yeah, get to yeah, it when yeah, you yeah. want. <laughs> totally. It, it, it'll <laughs> yeah, always be there. <laughs> you're not going to miss out on the snaky bus league by waiting. No. Oh man. If only. What would that even look like? Man, multiplayer like, snaky multiplayer. bus would be pretty interesting. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like something. A lot of buses all just running around. Oh, it sounds like Tron. <laughs> It sounds like the kind of game that I'm not saying I would expect them to do this or that I think they will, but like, it sounds like the kind of game, like they could add a hard mode that does what you're saying, where if you tap mm. your, your body, you die. They could add a, um, cause I like the idea of like looking at the trailers. I like the idea of like driving on top of yourself mm -hmm. to wrap yourself around. So I don't know that I think it would be better if the default was that you just explode when you hit your body, but I could see a mode where that would be great to make it like more challenging or adding something like some kind of multiplayer. I think you could also add an interesting, like there could be an interesting concept to like build a level with your snaky bus. And then once you stop moving, the parts are all still there. And then somebody else has to try to like drive a non snaky bus from point A to B in the level or something like that. Like there's so many yeah. different weird things you could do with this concept that it would be neat if they kind of, even if they didn't do it as like for free or they didn't do it as updates, if they would take that idea and run a little further with it. Yeah. I would be interested in seeing if they, uh, if they update and expand it, what they would add. Cause it's a creative yeah. concept in like from the start. So totally. Yeah. Either way, that's, that's an bus. There's not, all that much to say about it. I've, I only put in like an hour and a half. So <laughs> uh, that's, but that's basically the full experience. Cool. Did, do you play anything else this week? Uh, just tents and trees. You were away for that. And yeah, in terms of stuff that's worth talking about, that's about it. Cool. So I guess it's uh, down to what I played. And so Number one, uh, here's your Tetris 99 update of the week. <laughs> um, this weekend is another event. Um, mm -hmm. but this time it's to, uh, if you get 100 points in the event, you get a, a retro uh, Game Boy Tetris uh, skin for your game. How yeah. hard is getting 100 points? Because I do Honestly, not that. very hard. Um, yeah. it's, yeah. It took me like maybe six games. Uh, it depends. You get a certain number of points. But you're good at it. <laughs> okay. But, okay. So I, I, okay. So I was keeping track of the points just for this exact question. Uh, if you get to about 20 something, you get 10 points around 10 points. If you get closer to like top 10, you get about 20 points. If I, I, my, lo my lowest score was about 50. Like I, I just completely bailed out of that game and it was, I got, I still got like about five points. I want um, you to know that completely bailing out of that game for most people is not making it to 50. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll let yeah. you know what it's like when you go out at number, but like, I, when you're, when you make it to the top 90. <laughs> But I heard uh, I've I've heard from other people that it, it's taken them about an hour. Um, okay, that's fair. That's it, totally it doesn't. Fine. Yeah, hundred points. Like like I said, like top ten is twenty points. So it's like they uh, and I got to number two at one point, and they just like threw points at me. So um, yeah. So it but it, but it had but you play with using the retro screen while you do it. So you get to have that kind of experience. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You so can at least see like if I were to go in and go, ah, this isn't worth it to me, then like not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. You, you still get to play with it, but it's it's but it's very neat and it's a very old school Game Boy Tetris. So I personally really liked it. And I, I'm actually really interested to see if this is what they're going to keep doing with these uh weekends or if they're going to go back to the um offering points. Uh yeah. I, I I don't know. It seems more creative than doing a battle pass to have like weekend events because mm -hmm. it gets people move like it gets people playing all at once and it encourages you to just like spend time in that application. So I like the idea of them selling 
pieces of Tetris like that are, cause like they're selling that offline mode, right? Mm -hmm. That's totally worth it to me. I will definitely buy that because the idea that I could practice yeah. with like more difficulty controlled bots is really oh, appealing. Sure. And, and it, uh, feels, it feels reasonable to ask for money for that because it's not nothing to program bots for that game. So, and for what it's worth, the offline mode is, is fairly easy. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, I, I feel like it's a really, really good option if you really want to, um, work your way up through the levels yeah. of the offline system because there's five different levels. Um, oh, I just found a, t uh, a point breakdown. Um, let's see. Uh, winning a match gets you 100 points. Uh, second place will get you 50 points. Third place will get you 30. Fourth or 10th is 20. And then it's uh, you get 10 points from 11 to 30 um, if you're between 11 to 30. Seven points if you're between 31 and 50. Four points if you're between 51 and 90. And then one point if you're between 91 and 99. That's cool. Yeah. So you, so you always get a point uh, if you're play like if you play it um yeah, so 100 games easy it, yeah so i mean if, if you I I could get to 90th <laughs> maybe as uh, i have I, amazon prime i now have tetris 99 so i should probably try it i i it's it's gonna be something i bring up as game in game of the year i like regardless of events i still play like I still play a lot of this game. I, it, I, I kind of default to it if I don't have other things to play. So. I really want to get to a place where I can enjoy it. Like the controls, the Switch controllers just feel so bad to me whenever I try to play it. That was my big barrier before, and I haven't really tried since then. So I'm hoping that like I can get better at it. Yeah, you, and I, I think a, offline is... a Joy-Con yeah. or a Pro Controller? Both. I, I uh, think that pro you controllers pro controller don't use it. No, 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 of course. Yeah, I found that out early, so I switched to Joy-Con, and then I found that, that I also did not like that because it felt like not having the connected D-pad on the left just didn't really, like, work for me. And then, well, like... That's the, the unconnected D-pad's the best part for me. That I wouldn't play Tetris on anything apart from a Switch. Yeah, I, I couldn't get I couldn't get it. You couldn't get it feeling like right at all. I like it, it, it felt like really, really bad to me as someone who played a bunch of Tetris effect, like right before playing Tetris 99, I was like, Holy shit. Tet I can't fathom That's probably it. playing a bunch of Tetris with this kind of control, like this kind of D pad. So I don't know, but I, I want to like it a lot. And clearly a lot of people aren't having the same problem that I'm having. So I feel like if I keep, at it maybe i can get past that uh so we'll see yeah um yeah so but if you're if you're interested then you can uh i i think the skin's real is is very yeah cute. yeah uh, it looks cool and it's very it's very fun to uh to have that kind of retro and they, they always they have the green screen so it's like it's very nice um the other game that i've uh played and i feel like every time i try to say it i uh mispronounce it so it's, but i played astrologaster there there we go Nailed astrologaster it. first time I did, it. I did it um which i mentioned in our um podcast group chat um like that i wish we'd i'd been able to talk about it last week because it is very much a story i, I would say like it could be even considered a visual novel type of game because it's it's really interactive fiction basically um but you play in uh, uh elizabethan uh, london and you are a real um person who was uh, a, do a doctor quote unquote who basically uses astrology to um diagnose people so um you were basically every everything is brought up uh as people coming to you for their either their ailments or sometimes they might ask you personal questions and you have to choose options based off of what the stars tell you it's it feels very vague to choose but at the same time it kind of makes sense because you're playing as this quack doctor who's just like uh the stars tell you that it's x like sometimes you can do better if you vaguely know some basic medical knowledge so it's like hmm he this person has like one person basically uh had gallbladder issues which i'm very familiar with so i was just like oh i know what that is and you can kind of 
diagnosed based off of that, but, um, the, but yeah, but the real, real, um, so it's basically the, the crux of the gameplay is reading these stories and then making choices, but the real, um, draw of the game is the presentation, which is just, which is really interesting. It um, looks fantastic. Yeah. The aesthetic of the game is that you're playing basically like a pop-up book. So you have to uh, turn pages between each, each thing. Um, so aesthetically it looks, it's really good, but then, uh, musically each character, each little vignette, where the person comes uh, to you is, uh, is uh soundtracked by uh singers doing madrigals of each one so it's basically like having like a short verse that's written about each character in their predicament uh sung by an actual choir which is which is very which is very cool for a very very indie game but it's it's really yeah. it's really good um and then also the other thing that is good is that it is genuinely maybe one of the funniest games I've played mm -hmm. ever um, yeah. because it does a really good job of being funny, but not being uh, necessarily like funny in a way that draws you out of the story or that draws you out of the time period. Like occasionally they'll like throw in something that's a little anachronistic, but they won't, they're not going to kind of lean into that. It's, uh, it seems like like video games often make jokes. Like that's a big thing. Like from like the like the bedrock of video game humor seems built on sort of like the 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 old school LucasArts humor, mm -hmm. which is great. Don't get me wrong. In those games, it's really good. But this game seems more like it's not telling jokes. It's just funny writing. Yeah, and each character, it, it, like, the characters are really well developed about it too. So there's certain characters. Like there's one who comes in. And uh, I, I, I researched her um, and she was actually a real um, historical mm -hmm. poet and it brings her and it, but the, the, all of her little vignettes are basically like, yeah, she's smart, but she's a woman. So what, which, what's she going to do? And it's like kind of playing off of the fact that she's kind of dealing with all of this. There's one character who's like very much a hypochondriac and the, the humor kind of centers around that. It's like very character driven humor. It's very, uh, it's, it, it does, it does, um, kind of, uh, like this fine, like it kind of operates on this very, very fine line of it, uh, of just making its humor work. Like it's just genuinely really funny. And there have been multiple times when I've been playing it and I've actively, laughed uh laughed out loud because i've just thought it was genuinely really really hilarious so it's uh i i really love this game and think that uh it's it's definitely worth it to check it out the only thing that i would say is like a criticism is um the big overarching uh goal of your character is to get letters of recommendations from each pe each person um from as many people as possible, because if you get enough of them, then you might be able to get a medical license, which I, that's exactly how this works. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and how you get points is, uh, the get points towards that is a little bit big, but I actually don't really mind that because of just how much of a, a game this is based off of, uh, let's diagnose something based off of, uh, constellations and planets and things, but I wish that you could, um, there's a part at the end of each thing where you can read, re read your, uh, like notes from past consultations. And I kind of wish you could have done that before, uh, before you get into the new consultation, especially, mm -hmm. especially if I'm picking it up after a few days and I'm like, yeah. wait, who's this character again? Oh, 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 and, oh, I remember who this person is. Okay. Um, so it'd be nice if there was a little bit more of being able to look back on your notes and realize, hmm, this person's been hypochondriac for the past five times. They're probably not gonna be super accurate now. So do like based off of that, but, but that, it's a really small complaint. Um, but it, but it's, it's, 
it's really, um, I, I, I think even the approval of getting the letters of recommendation is a, it's kind of an interesting system because to a certain point, you want to tell them what they want to hear because their letters of recommendation are based off of their approval. So if you tell them something that's they don't necessarily like, they might not like it and they might have like lower their approval with you, but you don't want to necessarily lie to them because they might come back and be like, oh, hey, you told me this, but this actually happened. And then their approval will go down. Or if it's like, no, no, you were right. I realize you were right. Uh, yeah, I was wrong. Then your, your approval will go way, way up. Like, so there's like an element of, do I want to tell them what they want to hear right now or not? Yeah. It almost seems like the, the fun of the game is less in trying to win and more in seeing what happens when you tell them different things. And like, yes. not that you're not trying to like, now that you're just doing it for humor, like you're, like you say, you have to kind of read what they want, but it sounds like it's a little arbitrary in how it assigns your success, but yeah, and that's I don't... okay because it's very funny. And the point isn't so much like, Oh, you screwed up and lost. So game over. It's more like, where's this going to go now? <laughs> right. And I don't think that it's, uh, um, I don't think that you should be playing it with the idea of like, Oh, I'm going to min max and try to win. Right, exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's something that you like, uh, I think that people could get really frustrated with, well, I don't know which one to choose, but I don't, I think that you should not play with uh, that in mind. You should play yeah. with like, just, Hmm, what do, do I think? Okay. Well, I'm going to choose this one and see what happens. Yes. Um, yes. I only watched the quick look so far, but I'm going to buy it for sure. Cause it looks yeah. really funny. It looks it like is. a great game to play with someone too. If you like sit down and like say like, well, what should we choose for this? What's the answer mm -hmm. to this one? I can imagine that'd be really, really fun too. We were yeah. sitting and my partner and I were sitting and watching the quick look and we were like yelling at the TV, like, <laughs> no, Abby pick this. It's not, you're, you're, you're not reading this right. <laughs> and it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny. And I, and I actually, um, I, I watched that quick look as well. Um, and I, I kind of, uh, could relate to like, I've been playing this one kind of trying to do a good job, like, you know, like doing the best I can with the information I have, like picking the options that I think like this seems close to right. Although, uh, um, but I think it'd be kind of fun to do maybe another play playthrough and just see, like, let, let me be the worst doctor of all time and yeah. see how that goes there was a really then the quick look the, i mean minor spoiler um but in the quick look there was a there was a, a moment on uh where you're like talking your character's like talking to a woman who you have been having an affair with mm -hmm. who is married and she comes to you asking you if you like asking a question about whether or not the person she's having an affair with is interested in another woman and it's like the way she says it, you could totally, you could totally read it as like, well, she's not talking about me. She must be having an affair with somebody else, which is how Abby on giant bomb read it. Or you could read it as, well, she's asking about me, but she doesn't want to use my name because she wants to like get her astrology. And it's very funny because it's like, you read it, you, what, how you, how you answer that question to yourself is like, is she talking about me or is she talking about somebody else informs how you solve her problem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if you get it wrong, it's hilarious. Cause she gets so angry. <laughs> I, that was interesting. Cause I definitely got it right. Because I was like, Oh, you, you must be ha talking about me. But yeah. the thing that's kind of interesting too, is that your character isn't just this blank slate. Like right. there, yeah. there, there are so many moments where it's like, where, where like you're reading the stars and, he, and he's just like, Hey, this person said something about me. I'm going to choose this. One. Like, like clearly biased towards certain ones or has like, there are certain times where you make choices and he, and he says like something and you're like, hold on. I don't know if I would say that, but it's like, he's very much his own character, which is, I think works really well here. He's a real person too. I, I think, yep. I think pretty much all the characters are real people. Like how true I, the story is. I don't know, but I think some of them are, and some of them aren't like, there have been a yeah. couple that I've looked them up and the one that was the poet. I was really, I was really excited because she, she was real, but I was looking up, uh, some of the others and I don't think that 
they're, I don't know to what extent they're real. Like I, I, I Googled some of them and didn't find any information. Um, I think it's tied a lot to Shakespeare also. Um, obviously yeah. the he reference, but he doesn't show up, but there's the, but one of the, but one of the, the, the poet is actually in the, uh, working with him right? working with him yeah. in it and 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 um yeah so it's the, the it, which i feel like is kind of nice because i feel like they kind of go through some more obscure well people, but they that, don't go with the easy let's let's yeah. have shakespeare that's the other thing it looks like the main character is real too i just found yep. his, him yep. on Wikipedia. Uh, and and um w- the other thing i that has me sold on it is it appears that like kind of like what you were saying earlier about having some vague medical knowledge. It's, it, it doesn't play to the lowest common denominator. It's willing to like respect your intelligence as mm-hmm. like when a poet says I'm working with a person named S like, like you can figure out who that is. Like an Assassin's Creed game would have Shakespeare mar- walk through the door and then someone would say, ah, William Shakespeare noted playwright. <laughs> like, <laughs> he just where, he just finished putting on Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like he has a new play in the works based on blah blah blah. And then you would do a mission where you inspire Hamlet, and and like <laughs> that stuff's fun. Not gonna but, lie, I do kind of want to do it. No, it's great. Nah, that's part of why I love Assassin's Creed. <laughs> but it's great. I like that this game has more of a like it, it respects your intelligence enough. To yeah, say, you know yeah. And, about, you know what these things are. Yeah, and before you and before you do any of the read some of the stars, there's there's a point where. You're, you're you're um looking through it or you're carrying their stuff and you're like hang on that sounds like that person is might be pregnant and any like that yeah. that pops up and you go okay that's probably right um so it does kind of it does respect your intelligence yep, um cool. yeah but i i just really really like this game and uh think that it's like almost a crime that it only has 16 reviews on steam right now yeah. Because it is, it is like, ups, like almost upsettingly good and well put together, it especially for being awesome. such an indie title. It's, it's got, it has some, some glowing reviews on places like Rock Paper Shotgun and stuff. So, I'm sure that it will take off. Um, yeah, I, I sure, sure hope so. But if, if, it, if this sounds interesting, then I definitely, definitely recommend it. Yep. Um, it's, it's a very, very fun game, and the presentation is, is just, is just to die for. Um, especially yep. some of the music. Like, I actively <clears throat> love them to put out a soundtrack and just have all of those songs because I would actually actively listen to it. Cool. All right. Uh, does anybody uh, have anything else they'd like to bring? Everyone should go, and I alluded to it before we started, everyone should go and watch the Magic the Gathering War of the Spark trailer because holy shit... It is very funny. <laughs> just just go do that for yourself. Whether you like that game or not, you don't have to like it, but the trailer. Oh, and today isn't a... T- uh, by the way, today isn't a K-pop week. It's a Carly Rae Jepsen week. Woo. So everybody mm. go listen to Carly Rae Jepsen's new album, uh, Dedicated. It's really, really good. Yeah, it's good. It's a good album. It's... Uh, I, I f- at first, I, when I listened to it, I thought, "Is it going to be as good as Emotion?" And it, it might be. It's. Uh, and I'm seeing her in concert in July, and I am just like super excited. So. Cool. Yeah. So I think then if that's it, I think we can wrap it up for this week. So, uh, Alex, where can people find you? Internet. Internet. T- Cool. Pat, how about you? You can find me on Twitter at JesterPC and at GamingAndConference.com. I'm finally getting back to a little bit more writing. I'm hoping to have around a piece up a week, but I'm only writing when stuff strikes me as a thing I want to write about rather than trying to force Good. blood from a stone. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, Sam, how about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at SGCH. That's the best place. I don't check any of the social media anymore. <laughs> You can find me on Twitter at W-R-I-T-E-R-S-E-R-E-N-Y-T-Y. And on Friday nights, you can find me uh, tipsy talking about K-pop on my Twitter. So you can have that to look forward to. Um, All right. And you can find us on various, all your favorite podcasting things. And while you're there, why not rate and review? 
it takes you three minutes and we'll make our lives better. And like, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah. And on iTunes and on Spotify. And I'm trying to think and Stitcher and all of the other podcast things. Basically share your love for us and it will make our lives. And I'm just going to leave it there with no other qualifier. Mm-hmm. It makes our lives. It yeah. makes our lives. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Don't forget to tip your waitress. Yeah. Yes. Or do if you live in the UK and they didn't give great service. <laughs> Get your cat spayed and neutered. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do that yep, too. Definitely. Both of my boys have no balls. Well, we have an episode title. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to end on that one. Hey, bye, you know, there's, a, there's a there's a there's a dagger handle in Mordhau called Bollocks, and it is <laughs> it is two little two little balls. Like it's it's very funny. Anyway, also play Mordhau. The, <laughs> the gaming gaming the comics podcast that I listen to. Their sign off is "Kiss Me Sexy Batman," because uh, in one scene a character meets Nightwing. And she, as she, as he like does a flip away, she she says under her breath, "Oh, kiss me, sexy Batman." <laughs> so that's a good sign off. Good sign off. Don't think that can be ours, but I think we need to find one that has that level of quality. So. Yeah, I'll send you the panel because it's very funny. All right, bye, bye, bye everyone. <laughs> Can't find the ending button. The cat is in the way.